have you ever felt yourself feeling like off, like sad, stuck in, like stuck in your thoughts and then come and find out you don't even realize how long you've been sitting there? Like that was me. I knew that fibroids was affecting me physically because I could feel it, right? But I didn't realize how much it was affecting me mentally. And it was attacking my mind, honestly. And it took me a while to admit it. Although other people would ask me like, what was going on? I mean, I just couldn't put two to two together. But today I want to talk to you guys how I moved from being stuck to finding joy. All I think about is you. Even when I'm with my boo. You know I'm crazy over you. Hey babe, if you are new here, my name is Dose of Tempest. If you're returning, hey boo, hey. So fibroids have a way of changing everything from how I move to how I think. At first I thought, okay, this is just a physical thing. I'll deal with the pain, the fatigue, the heavy cycles. But y'all, nobody told me how it would affect my mind. Let's be real. For African-American women like us, ages 30 through 45, whether you have kids, you don't want kids, you're married or not, fibroids just don't touch one part of our lives. They touch everything. And for me, it changed how I approach everyday actions, my relationship, and my outlook on the future. Even how I see myself as a woman. Fibroids force me to think about everything, like what I eat. How much energy do I use? What do I even wear? I used to be spontaneous, but now I have to plan everything out. I have to plan every outing. Some of the questions I ask myself is, how long will we be out? Will there be a clean restroom? How far away will we be from the restroom? How long will we be set on our feet? Will there be a comfortable spot for me to sit down? Is there a heating pad and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then when I share those thoughts and people don't get it, when they don't understand, like, and their response is, why can't you just push through? It puts me into protection mode. And if you feel anything like me, you feel like you have to explain yourself and you just start avoiding people altogether. I found myself becoming more introverted, not because I wanted to, but because I felt misunderstood. But here's the thing, that mental stress, feeling isolated, feeling less than, it's, it's real. And it can creep into your everyday thoughts without even realizing it. So in 2016, my surgery was supposed to be the start of a new chapter, right? And while I was grateful to finally see some relief physically, nobody talked about the mental side. Well, in 2016, hardly anybody even knew what a myomectomy was. I rarely even understood fibroids. Like, what is that? That was a new language for me. And while I was grateful to get the myomectomy, which brought some relief post-surgery, I had so many questions. And a couple of those were, would the fibroids come back? If they come back, how? What does this mean for, for pregnancy? Will I be able to even get pregnant? All of those things. And I remember sitting in one of the doctor's office and they told me, well, if you want kids, you need to hurry up. And that was such so much of a rush pressure. Whew. It, it shaped how I felt and viewed pregnancy. And, and it kind of gave me like a timeline on my body. And that's something I kind of wrestle with to this day. But here's what I want to say. And this is what I tell myself often. Give yourself grace. Surgery may have healed my body, but healing my mind is also a process. It's okay to feel like you're scared, you're hopeful, you're frustrated, you're happy. All 
all, even all at once. Let me tell y'all something that completely shifted my mental health. And that was movement. I'm not saying that you have to hit the gym five days a week, but it's like you have to find ways to move your body to make a huge difference. And once you get into a rhythm of everything, you realize moving your body changes your mood. And for me, it started with short walks and then just getting outside, letting the sun hit my face and, and then deep breathing. Um, walking gave me time to clear my mind and reflect without pressure. Then I found a low impact exercise that, that I like, AKA yoga and stretching and yoga helped me to feel more in tune with, with myself, especially with my body after surgery. And on those days where I feel disconnected or frustrated, I go to yoga. Um, there's like, there's something about holding a pose, breathing in and out so deep that it remind me that I'm stronger than I think. So if you're dealing with pain or fatigue, just think about yoga. Take that consideration because even the light stretches can help. Start with five minutes. You don't have to do a long overexerted se session. Just start with five minutes. Trust me. It's not about the intensity, it's about the consistency. Every small step helps. Sometimes we, we think it's just the physical symptoms, right? But fibroids can mess with your mental too. And here's how to recognize when it's taking a toll on your mind. So when you're feeling off more than not, when everyday tasks seem overwhelming, you start avoiding people or the activities that you used to love to do. Um, also, you feel stuck. You feel hopeless about the future. Studies show that chronic pain and stress can change the brain chemistry, making it harder to regulate your mood. So if you ever feel like depression or anxiety is creeping in out of nowhere, it's not in your head. It's just your body asking for help. When I got hit with the reality of what fibroids took for me, my energy, my social life, and even some dreams I had about motherhood, y'all, I was so low. But I began to cope, and this is how I was able to do so. So I hope you find some, some help in this as well. So three things. One, I talked to someone. I talked to a friend, I talked to a couple friends actually, and I talked to a therapist. I found support in a group of women also with fibroids, um, so I didn't have to bottle everything up that I was dealing with. Two, I focused on what I could do. Instead of focus on what I could not do anymore, I started to focus on the things that I could physically do, and I was beginning to find joy in those little things. And three, romanticizing your life. So to my sisters out there who are dealing with fibroids, navigating mental health, or just trying to get through this thing called life, know this, <laughs> you're not alone, sis, you're not alone. But most importantly, through this journey, you deserve joy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you like this content, please make sure that you let me know so that I can produce more. I appreciate you guys for just listening and joining me in on this one. Until the next time, between time, take care of yourself and find the little joys. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.